Okay guys, so I'm always saying whenever I pick up these British magazines, especially the Crafters Companion ones, I always say I've never printed out anything from their printables and that I will do it for you guys one day. And so I was looking through the magazine here and I think I want to do this one because it's kind of fun. It's to make like a little caddy. And you just need one 12 by 12 piece of paper that you're going to put your pieces on, but we're going to print out the um, printed paper that looks like oh, mandala, whatever, like those color pages, right? The coloring pages. So you need to print out two of those because you're going to have to cut this paper up and obviously the paper is standard A2 size paper so you need enough to cover basically this whole thing. So you're going to have to print out two of these and then you're just going to cut it up in pieces however you want because it doesn't matter. You're just going to piece it all together with a little matting. So we're going to do that one. I think that's going to be easy. It's black and white. I'll print it on some cardstock. And then I was looking at this and I'm like, well, I do like this cute little pattern that they have. This um, has to do with like foxes. What does it say? Hold on the Autumn Days collection on the CD. So I was looking at this just because it has a few different things going on. I think that's pretty cute. I don't know. I'm assuming that little fox image is on there because otherwise it's not on the stamp set, I don't believe. Let me look. No. So uh, I'll show you this, the, what this magazine came with in just a second. This is the one that the magazine that's out right now if you're watching this, you know, as I'm uploading it. This is super cute though. It's a little school satchel. It's like a little back to school little gift for a teacher and it's adorable and I would totally do this you guys but it doesn't really have a lot of the stuff printed out that you need so it's just to make a little box basically that has a longer flap. Really cute. Oh my gosh. It's adorable. But I just wanted to show it to you because it's very cute. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to let me put this marker here show you what was in it. It's the Crafters Inspiration issue 23 and if you guys watched a recent video I was telling you they were having a sale on the Crafters Companion website of their magazines. Super cheap. I'm telling you if you just wait you're gonna get them for I mean I got two for eleven dollars the other day. Two of them. So pretty cheap. Um, but right now even this one is brand new. They had it for $9.99 on their website and they usually sell for $19.99 and it just came out. So there's that. But it came with a uh, an embossing folder that has the mandala, not mandala, but the um, dream catchers on there. Uh, it came with some really nice um, dies to cut out this stamp that's like a mandala stamp. So you can color that in or you can, you know, cut it out however you want. But these, all these, cut all this stuff here. Hey, I just heard my computer go off. Okay, and then um, some cute little stamps and things that can go along with everything else. So basically you can make this mandala look like a uh, dream catcher too. But what we're focusing on today is the disc. Have you guys ever printed anything off these discs? I'm curious to know because I literally have probably 12, 15, I don't know how many magazines are theirs. Never once or even other magazines when they come in or you know whenever people started downloading digital images and that's what they would color. I don't do that. I'm just not a computer person. I really am not. Um, you know went through school, have a master's degree and all that. Obviously, this is in the Stone Age. No, I'm just kidding. I graduated <laughs> high school in 96. My first college degree, I don't remember, to be honest. It was probably 2002. I don't know. No, it has to be later than that. I took my I took my sweet time on that one. And then my master's degree, I did pretty quickly, but I think I graduated that one in 2005. I don't, I don't even remember. Oh my gosh, such a blur. But anyway, I only did what I had to. And even the computer I'm going to show you guys right now, I don't think I've done any kind of Word document on there. It's literally just for editing my videos and uploading them to um, YouTube. So hopefully it'll take this disc. I've never tried anything like that. <laughs> I, you know, I ordered the Power Director. A lot of people ask me what I use for um, uh, editing. It's uh, uh, Power Director. Power Director? Yeah. Oh, how come I can't remember the name of it? I'll, Cyberlink Power Director? I'll look on there right now. See, I don't even remember. So I don't put discs in there. So we're going to open this up. Supposedly it has uh, seven different things in here. So I'm going to take this over to my computer. It also usually comes with some education. And this one happens to be about the Gemini. But I'm going to take this and we're going to pop it in. And it, I'm going to print out things from the Color As You Go collection and the Autumn Days collection. And I'm going to take you over to my computer and we'll see what this is about. Okay, guys. I always keep this window closed just because, but I have a big window. And yes, I have two computers. This is my old computer that I used to use for YouTube. And I still have a lot of videos on there. So this is a desktop. And I upload them every once in a while from there. And then this is the one that I just keep here. Um, and I usually sit on my couch to do all my editing and stuff. But I have it here on the desk right now. Ooh, I'm going to slide off this. Sorry, it's not going to be this. Uh, I'm going to settle this in here. I didn't want to move my tripod just for this. So, okay, let's... I don't even know how to open the CD. Oh, <laughs> see, I thought I had to open it and it would pop out, but no, I just slide it in. <laughs> I think, 
Oh my gosh, you guys, I don't know how to... What is this? Hold on. What is this? Obviously, it's um, what it is. No, it does pop out. There it goes. Oh, see, it does pop out. I'm not too ancient. I think on the Mac, I have to just slide it in, right? But my husband has a Mac that I always keep. Um, oh, that was kind of annoying. All right, I guess I'm going to push that in there. Um, that we keep in the living room that I just surf the web with. And that's my, um, my buying stuff Mac. Hopefully I'm not covering... No, my microphone's up on top. Okay. Now let's see how long this is going to take to open up. Oh, by the way, this is an Asus laptop. And the only reason I got it because I had a friend who had an Asus. I'm like, oh, this is cool. It's been it's about three years old. But if I unplug it, the screen starts flickering. And it, and it is touch screen. But I don't know what that's about. And I'm like, is it a setting that I have on here? That it's like, oh, and it's unplugged? Act ridiculous? I don't think so, but... I thought it was maybe it's power saving, but that doesn't save power for it to flicker on and off. And you think that's more electricity? I don't know. So it didn't open it right away. It did show me a little note here. So let me open this up or go to what is all this? I, I don't even know. <laughs> Let's file explorer, I guess. Um, nothing is popping up here. I'm going to wait a minute for this thing to actually pop up because I'm not going to bore you with this. Now I hear that it stopped doing something. Did you hear that? It was spooling and then it stopped. Let's go this PC. Oh, right here. Interesting. I hope that's it. Yeah, my memory is all full on this laptop. <laughs> I need to move some videos off. So I double clicked on that and let's get it going. I guess you guys know it's safe to see whatever's on my computer here. <laughs> I don't have anything weird. <laughs> Whatever that uh, would entail. Let's see here. I do have some videos I have never, uh, what's the word, um, edited and used. It's a lot of review, like, um, review videos of electronics, like, uh, kitchen gadgets, should I say. I'll be right back, because I need to plug in my Sorry, camera. Sorry, the timing on that couldn't have been better, right? It didn't do anything, it just started up like this. Welcome to our interactive CD-ROM with issue 23 of Crafter's Companion Inspiration. This CD features a lot of versatile pattern papers and toppers to create a plethora of all occasion projects um, and all this other information. Okay, so it has to find out how to join Club Inspire and here we're going to click on Collections. This is cool. It's nicely interactive. It does say it needs Adobe Reader and I hope, I hope I have it on here. <laughs> I told you I haven't used this. Okay, so I clicked on the that one. We want to click on access the collection. And if for some reason this doesn't work for me, because I don't have Adobe, maybe I'll download real quick a free one. But I think, oh good, it looks like I have something on here. Okay, so it pops up all this stuff and I want to see what they look like. So I'm going to click over here. And, oh, where's my show? That part I usually do okay. View. Here we go. We're going to click on view because I want to see it from here. Extra large icons <laughs> so we can see it really nice. All right. Well, there's different things you can print out. Um, and I want like a full page design. So I'm assuming, oh, like little tags. Some other items. Let's keep going. Oh, that's cool. So these are like card fronts or maybe like little toppers. It does show on there, like, if you want to print something out, there's numbers for some reason. <laughs> 18, 16, 30, 40, 50. I'm looking for full pages, people. Okay, just writing, mandala, papers. That's probably it, yeah. So, there's lots of papers here. So, it just depends what you want to print. Um, I like this one. So, I don't know what to do. Do I open it? <laughs> okay. Hi. It's a little bit dirty, my screen, sorry. This is taking forever to open up, but I'm just doing this real time and hopefully that's beneficial for you guys. But yeah, I mean, I've never tried any of these things out, so this is kind of cool. And hopefully my printer, I checked on that and just to make sure my printer was hooked up. Okay, so it looks kind of like this. And what I want to do is say, let's say I want to print this. And I don't know if I should size it here, but I'm going to check on my printer if it says how big it can print and then I'll go from there let the app change my printing preferences oh per look it's already pretty much filled up the paper 
Eight and a half by 11. All right, sounds good. And I need two copies. So I'll say two. Oh, you know what? I need to put um, cardstock in my printer. So I will be right back. Okay, so what that reminds me to do is also to change the paper type. And I don't know if that really matters, but it says plain paper. And I'm going to say, oh my gosh. I guess I'm gonna say matte photo paper because it doesn't have cardstock on here as a drop down, which is weird. Well, at least this one doesn't. So, ugh. Yeah, let's just say matte photo paper, just because it knows that the paper is a little bit thicker. I don't think it matters. And sounds good. So we have two, sorry, and then matte photo. And let's print, see what happens. So I'm just using um, any old cardstock. It was one that I got Tuesday morning not too long ago because it's not really good for anything else. So we'll see if it's good for printing. Um, hopefully the printer starts up in a second here. Oh, what's gone? What's wrong here? Support code. The paper setting for print data is different from the one cassette. Oh, gosh. Okay, well, let me go check my printer and say it needs to be cardstock or whatever and choose it there, and then um, it should print. I'm going to show you part of my problem with my printer is that it's up high on a credenza. <laughs> and so when it says something up here, I can't read it. So I have to jump up on some stuff that I have here <laughs> and then or get a stool and then be able to read it. But it's taking a long time, so I think it's giving it some good printing here, which... I never do. My husband's like, you're so tight with the ink. I am so tight with the ink. I don't like wasting it or or making things so juicy that the paper's all like buckling because it's just so nice. <laughs> but here it comes and it's looking pretty good. Oh, it's a little dusty. Let's not pay attention to that. Look at this. That is really cool. And I love that I didn't have to mess with the size because I do not, I'm not good at that stuff. For the same reason like I told you guys. So anyway, it's going to take its sweet time. Okay, Let it print so out those two printer things. Who cares? Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to lay this down. I'm not going to... I never know. If you get back out of something, will it just forget about it? So I just laid that down. And let's close that. And let's um, exit, I guess. There's a... Well, maybe home. Let's see what home does. Okay, so I clicked on home, not exit. And now we're going to click, click on collections again. And now we want autumn days. And we want to access the collection. It's a pretty good little... I mean, they put time and effort into this thing, you know? <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I had to sneeze. I didn't really feel like pausing and then editing that, so... Here we are. Alright, view. Uh, let's do medium icons, just so I can fit it. Oh, no, that's tiny. Nope. I wanted to fit a few more in, but let's just do large icons. Nope, that's still too tiny. Alright, extra large it is. So these are all background papers. This one's super cute. It's like little crayons. And so, oh, yeah, that's right. So I supposedly I need background papers. Oh my gosh, I don't want to do a whole, well, this will be a place where we can, I need the little image and I need three pattern papers basically. So let me see what we got here. They have one that's all just green. I kind of want to see what else they have or where the little fox might be. School papers, it says, those are all school papers, school toppers, letters, that's cute, um, and then brush letters, you're awesome, congratulations, okay, I want to see if I can find, oh, oh, look at that one, that's cute, huh, that's a printable sheet, so basically everything that you need for whatever card might be there already, supposedly the card I looked at, it needs to print out on its own, like you need to choose things, but look at that. And then those big images, supposedly you can resize them and do whatever you want with. Maybe the fox is already here and is he already colored? I don't know. Let's find him. So I'm going to go through and look for... I don't want to bore you all with this. Look for that little fox. Because maybe I already passed him up. And when I find him, I will come back. Oh, look at the little school paper. This is so cute. Okay, it has a ton of alphabets. Um, a lot of cute stuff. So I guess I'm going to open this one. And then I'm going to print him, like, small. Like, this is kind of big, right? Um, I just wonder if I need to edit it now or, let's say, crop. No, I don't think crop is going to do it. Uh, let's just... What? <laughs> okay. Well, maybe. Hmm. What is this? Uh, no. Okay, here we go. I do want him to be smaller. I don't know how small that means and if this is even going to let me pull it smaller. Oh, here we go. Right? I mean, I don't know how small, what size... No, 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 that's not what I wanted at all. Let's, uh... Reset that. 
and aspect ratio maybe. Mm, custom. I want to make him smaller. You know what? Let me mess with this a little bit and then we'll come back and see if I can do that. Okay guys, so basically I just want to print. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I mean, this is my computer also, so obviously it has certain things and maybe it's controlled by the CD, I don't know. Or maybe it prints the way it needs, the size it needs to be before whatever the project is. Like they already have it set. I just, I don't know how to resize this, but I am not good at this. So I'm not gonna even pretend to like, oh, this is <laughs> how it should be. Let's say, okay, hold on, there's resize. Ugh. Best for profile thumbnails, best for no, define custom image. Okay, height and width, ugh, I don't like this. Okay, if you want to resize, I guess you can. I'm just going to print it out the way it, it's going to print. The only bummer is that it's right in the middle of the page, so you're kind of wasting paper. But you always have little white pieces of paper that you can use for different things. So, again, I'm going to I'm gonna leave it on plain paper this time, see what happens. <laughs> and it needs to be on color, right? Oh, yeah, let's make sure. I guess it's going to print. Let's just print. We'll see what happens. Okay, and once that finishes printing, I will show you what that looks like, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, well, I'm gonna keep, gonna keep you here for the whole thing, but these printed out, you saw that super slowly. It looks really nice. I mean, look at that. That is really nice. So I have two of those, and then this guy printed out the size he is. He's huge. Like I said, we could have resized it, and then I went to my, and he printed out in two seconds because I said plain paper, so he just went right out. So it's still pretty good. I mean, he's cute. He's not as bright as the color in this, but, you know, who knows? Okay, so it says, oh, also I bought cheap um, ink from Amazon that was like $17 for the colored and the black, two of the black ink for this Canon uh, machine that I have. So that could also have something to do with it, but who knows? Okay, uh, I just read this. It's a notebook. I don't know why I thought it was a card because it looks like a card, but I'm still gonna print it out. So I'm gonna print this background paper on cardstock and then I'm gonna print two more contrasting papers. I guess a full cardstock. If I can resize it to make it smaller so I don't have to have a full page, I'll try and do that. But um, the first one for sure, I'm gonna print the whole page. And then I'm gonna print two more colored pattern papers from the collection, just like I've been doing. And then I'll print out a You're Awesome, which again is probably gonna take up <laughs> a whole page. Again, if you have a editor, probably even, you know, Photoshop, Adobe, whatever, you can mess around with these things and print them out uh, in a more uh, effective manner, but I'm gonna go ahead and print these out and then we'll get to assembling Real quick um, To you know tell you all about how how well I do things. I'm just kidding um, What I know about computers. I just printed out this page and it's really pretty I mean that is really pretty and I was gonna crop it But then when you crop it it enlarged a part of it instead of just making it just a piece of it But maybe if you put it in word or like I said somewhere else you can do that, but when I pull it up right here to print um you can do photo size being full page. You can do a smaller, let's say five by seven, and it'll make it smaller, but it's also a smaller print. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, right? It sizes it. So it just depends on what you want to do. I'm just printing the whole page. Look at how cute this one is. I'm never going to get over this. Look at this. Oh my gosh. And then they have one, and I did quick print, quick print on this because like, I just did plain paper, and look how nice it is. It's really nice. So um, the only other thing I did was uh, shrink to fit. Well, let me go back to full page. I guess 8x10 might be okay, too. Um, instead of being fill page, I did shrink to fit. So that's all. <laughs> and then I just went ahead and printed. So, um, okay, let's go get going on this. Okay, I think we'll start with this because this is the easiest thing, the little caddy. So basically what I need to do is take my papers, and I'm going to cut 12 three and a half inch squares, okay? So from these papers, I'm just gonna obviously trim off that white side and then go three and a half inches and cut three and a half inch squares. I need 12 of them. So I'll be right back with those 12 cut out. And then to mat them, you're also gonna need, um, let me see here. Well, actually they just say to stick them on the mats, but we'll have to see about that. That's so funny, it doesn't give you a size for that. Come on, people. It's probably because of the little corner, the triangle ones, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But I'll be right back then with the 12 pieces that we need of this. And then on four of those pieces, four of the three and a half inch squares, I'm going to cut those in half so that we have the little um, triangles that go in these. So only four of those need to be cut in half diagonally, okay? So 12 three and a half inch squares, four of them cut diagonally. Okay guys, so this turned out to be an expensive endeavor. So I did use their mirror card. I do have the um, Enchanted Christmas luxury mirror card that has like the purple tone in it. So I grabbed 
two sheets of it. So you need two sheets of that. Not that this paper's expensive. You get it on sale and they're always doing sales. It's not like the worst price. But then, you know, all your ink. And like I said, I bought cheap ink on Amazon and it, it does a pretty good job. I really bought it for the black ink. But, you know, sometimes I make like labels for uh, cards, like to my address labels. And I like to just print out all kinds of cute things. And I've shown you guys how to do that before. I think it was one of my old videos. If you guys want to sh see that again, I will try and redo that video. But so for now, since they didn't say what size these cards are, are to be, the mat, um, basically when you go to fold our paper, which we're going to do next, I just want to get this glued. Um, when we fold our 12 by 12 piece of paper, you need to do four inch quadrants. So this outer part I know is four inches. The little inner part they asked us to cut was three and a half inches. So I cut the mirror card at three and three quarters. So three and three quarter inch squares. So we have three and a half inch squares of the pattern, three and three quarter inch squares of the mirror card. Four of these we then cut in half, right? And I just put it on my trimmer. Let's say this is a trimmer. And I just lined it up in the very edge where I know it's going to cut and then line up the other corner and then just slice it. So. You can probably do it with a scissor. If your scissor is nice and long, you can just eyeball that and slice it right in half. So I did that for four of these and for four of these guys. So now we have eight pieces. And basically all we're going to do is glue these down. And I should probably use a tape runner, to be honest, because it'll be faster, huh? Hmm. I wonder if they pop off later, though. What do you guys think? I don't... It doesn't matter. So I'm going to put the tape on the back of these guys. Um, wet glue, tape runner, whatever you choose. I guess a wet glue would be nice because they get right into the corner here, this little tiny corner. Oopsie. So however you like, but you're just going to mat up your pieces. And of course, I have to be careful with this because it, let me see how it's supposed to look. It's going to have a very small eighth inch around. Ooh, that's very small. That is a very, very, very small. Again, I need to recenter myself. I'm supposed to be working here. I told you guys I moved my camera so I can see better <laughs> and I keep working way out here because I'm so used to that so it takes a while I mean it's years of doing it that way so okay it's gonna be really like that and I'm not gonna be too picky like here I probably could have pushed it over a little more this way but that's okay so we're gonna mat these all up all the triangles all of the squares and if you really want to keep these triangles together, which I didn't, I just cut them up like if this belonged to this one, which I don't think it does, but you can't really tell. If you want to match them up, make sure to keep them together, but I don't really care. And then on the squares, again, just the same thing. Try to get into the very corners. And map that up, okay? And this one I can kind of see a little better. That triangle's hard because it's hard to tell. Ah, I'm going to recenter this one. It needs to go over a little bit more this way. All right. And I did use the guillotine cutter actually to cut this, which is interesting. The Crafts Companion one, the little mini one I have. Okay, I'll be right back once I get all these. And all we have to do is uh, fold up the 12 by 12 piece of paper and get these on there. Okay, so these are all done, ready to go. I'm going to put them over here. What we need to do is take a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Oh, yeah. I tell you, I don't like that focuses on these things up here. That's the only way I can get them out of the way. Um, and we're going to score at every four inches. So basically just get out your scoreboard. And this supposedly was black. It looks kind of brownish. Oh, well, I couldn't find for all the paper that I have. That's, you know, uh, Crafters Companion. I don't have any 12 by 12 paper from them other than a pattern paper set that I had. But anyway, so what we're going to do is on all four sides, um, we're going to, uh, score at four inches so four inches all the way down and i'm going to turn my paper because that's the only way i can fit in here and then four inches and then in the other direction also four inches and four inches or four and eight inches if you have a scoreboard that can do all like your score pal or your martha stewart so again four inches off of every corner so you're just making these quadrants right and then what you're going to do is just take this and if you have your score pile, probably be better. You're going to line this up so that it's nice and straight, hopefully, and score halfway down one of these every corner. OK, so every corner you're going to do and I'm hoping this is right. Eh, it's a little bit off. OK, let me tote it that way. 
Uh, okay, something like that. So from there to the middle, to the bottom corner. And then what I'm saying is it'd be easier if I had a bigger scoring board because I could see kind of where this is beginning and this other point ends. But anyway, so you're just going to score right down the center of every corner. Okay, sorry about the lighting right now, but again, I'm working in the morning and this is how it is. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll say use a wet glue, which is kind of silly because I want to adhere this quickly, but that's okay. So I am going to put it Wherever you have a square, you're going to adhere a square, okay? Um, I'm using the side where I actually did the um, scoring. I guess if you want to use the opposite side and put them on this way and you're going to score the other way, it doesn't matter. Put them on whichever side. I'm just going to put it on this side. So I'm just going to get some glue. And wherever I have a square, I'm going to center my little square. And wherever we have the uh, triangles, we'll do the triangles. And this one I kind of messed up and I wanted to kind of go away. Oh, this is interesting. Hold on. Oh, no wonder. I'm like, why are there so many squares really when you think about it? Because we're going to put some on the inside too. Interesting. Okay. Well, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and just... Um, do the outside. And then it looks like you're supposed to add a few more on the inside part just to be a little more decorative. But it doesn't even mention that here. <laughs> so weird. Oh, and the remaining four squares to the inside. Okay, it's on this part. Okay, so on this outside, we're gonna decorate the whole thing, right? All of our squares are uh, triangles. I'll be right back. And then when that's all stuck down, I'll show you about the inside. Okay, hopefully you can see as I was going along, I was placing like weights on these because I wanted to make sure that they stayed flat because the purple paper is kind of dense and um it started kind of curling not curling but kind of bowing so i just want to make sure that it was really making contact with the paper so um i'm going to turn this over so like i said whichever side you work on doesn't matter but um at this point we're going to turn it over and we're going to adhere the last four that we have the last four squares just on the outer squares so you know there's this one in the middle we're not going to deal with that right now we're just going to put some glue and just put these down on these outer squares, right? So not the triangles at all, we're not gonna mess with that. So I put some glue and I put a little weight on that. <laughs> hey, is one of my squares missing? What if I only cut 11 squares? I don't think so, I think I did 12. Well, I only have three left in my hand, so we'll have to see, I might have to cut one more. Uh, it might be under here, I had one. Okay, we're just gonna place them on these outer squares and when everything's dry we'll put this okay, thing together guys, I figured it out I do have 12 do you see this you saw that they say to put it in the middle on the outside you do not put that one in the middle or else you won't have enough so that makes sense so instead of using nine pieces I hear you're using eight not the middle one you're using eight pieces and then the other four go on the inside so that is not my fault that was theirs it left an ugly spot so what I'm gonna do is cut a piece of purple just by itself and put it at the bottom um, put it here and then I'm gonna use this one and put it on the correct side there but they that was not anything I came up with that's what they said to do that's what's in the picture <laughs> but I will um, just stick something else here like I said probably some of that purple paper and um, I'll be right back. okay and what's funny is I have or had a um, hole punch it's like a regular paper punch you know and I always think, why do I have this? Like, I literally never punch papers. But I cannot find it at this point. So I'm going to use my crop doll But you don't need to have something fancy like this. And actually, this one's kind of more of a pain, in my opinion, for this operation. But what we need to do, and I'm not sure they mention it here, is pop holes on either side here. Let me show you. In each corner here, you're going to pop a hole. Let me turn this over. I don't I guess I don't have to turn that over. I just need to turn this over. Ay, I'm trying to get in frame here. Is just come in here and put a little hole towards on either side. Basically try to keep them about the same, but right? On all four corners. So on each side, we're gonna pop a little hole. All four. Okay, well this is still drawing. Sorry, this video is going on long. I went to get um, some ribbon and I finally found a thin one. This is the kind I use for like barrettes to whenever I do my hair bow videos on the clips. So it's like a, what, three eighths inch? Um, 
and it's still a little bit thick. And then I found this in where I have all my ribbons. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, I've had this since I was a little kid. Actually, let me show you. That's me. I think I was like five in this picture. Look how old school and washed out that is. And I worked, lived out in the country. It still kind of looks like this a little bit different, but that was me right there. That was my little Afro puffs. Too funny. That's a little girl my mom used to babysit. Um, oh, that is too funny. And here's another one of me and one of the kids my mom used to babysit. And pretty much... Not all of us. I don't even recognize some of these kids. Like, I don't know who they are. That's my sister and my brother. Is that Betty? My other sister. And some people. <laughs> so, I don't know. But that is too funny. Um, okay. I'm the youngest of five. So, I can see my oldest brother, I guess, wasn't in that picture. All right. Let's see here. So, normally I would take a str or pieces. I don't know how much we need. And I don't think it really says in there. So... You're gonna fold this in a way that, well, let's just start folding on the lines. So I still have the nice side down and this is the inner part. And this got really wet with all that glue. It feels like really moist, the paper, the whole, all of the paper. I don't know how, because obviously there wasn't glue in certain areas, but anyway. So we're kind of training it all in and then these corners are gonna come in like this, right? So I don't know how hard they need to be actually folded but we're gonna fold them in and then these guys are gonna come up again also fold it in this is actually really fun I mean next time maybe I have never even paid attention to those printable things I'm like yeah whatever um, never gonna print them so I never even looked at it but they're really really nice and then again if you know more about sizing and stuff you can do that do it in your editor. Look how cute that is. And then, like I told you guys on the bottom, I did put just the piece of the purple, which is gonna get all scratched up, but I, I said, why not? So I just put the purple piece. All right, so what you're gonna do with your ribbon is just run it through. And the way they showed it is they ran it from one side to the next to the next, you know what I'm saying? You just follow through from here. Oh, where's my bodkin? I should've got that thing this into this side and just keep continuing through in a circle like a circular fashion so here my goodness all right well anyway through here to the next one to the next one through the next one through the next one i'll be right back once i get it all circled okay, around so again just in a circular fashion is what they did i'm just going to cut it kind of a little bit longer because we still have to make like a bow and then probably take off that end because it's all frayed now. And just bring it together. I guess you can do this a little bit nicer. I just kind of threw it together. Who knows? Uh, make that a little bit looser. And I guess I could, I'll probably cut this off later because I'm going to bring more of it through so that this end is a little bit longer than this end shorter. But there it is cute little box or little caddy and it has a really nice weight to it probably because of all that paper that we use it's it's quite a bit so what they showed is like you know use it to hold markers or whatever else so let's say we threw these guys in there and maybe some of these guys hey where's the other one i was gonna say i had three here so anyway pretty cute and it just fell over but anyway so let's do the card so um that i kind of started to jump ahead on so what i'm gonna do with that card is basically make it a five by seven card with the little um creatures so i have some of it cut already where's okay the you're awesome i did size this down it was really big and then i just did it on regular printer paper because i wasn't going to waste a whole piece of cardstock on just cutting this out or printing that out so this print i just cut it down right now off with my paper trimmer to five by seven so it's a whole card front because it needs to be pretty big because this guy came out pretty big right so what I'm going to do with him right now real quick is just fussy cut him out. I don't want to use these scissors. Where are my... Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't want to use these because these have like a grippy side on one side. And I use these to cut like rough stuff. Where are my scissors? Okay. Well, I'm going to use these big ones for now. But once I get off camera, I'm going to look for my little scissors. And basically, we're just going to cut fussy cut this guy. So that means you're just going to go around him, leave like a little edge if you want, or right on the black line. But I'm going to leave a little bit of white. And again, put pressure on your scissor. But with this hand, move the paper. And that gives you a nicer um, edge. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go around and cut this. I would not usually use big, huge scissors like this. I would use those little pink itty bitty scissors or the little, here they are. Well, here are the yellow ones, these guys. And uh, the little pink ones, they're basically the same. So I'll use this. And then um, on these guys, we're supposed to have two different sizes of circle. Actually, three different sizes of circle. So I'm supposed to cut this one out in a larger circle, a white piece, and then a green piece. So I am going to just probably cut a section of this, run it through um, my Gemini Junior or any kind of die cutting machine to make um, the two different sizes of circles from these guys. And then from the white piece of paper, another middle size circle and I'll be right back. I have all the pieces that I think I want. So um, it has a little circle in the picture, but I I don't know why I can never find circle nesting dies. I should have a basic set or at least even from AliExpress or something, but I can never find them. So I found these actually that I've never used before and I, they were just in with some other Spellbinders dies that I have. So I thought, oh man, when I first started paper crafting, I used to get Spellbinders all the time. So I know where those are. So I started looking and the only thing I found these, I thought oh, this is actually kind of cute because it cuts out like a little leaf maybe maple leaf looking but it says leafy squares but this thing is a pain because these are very early editions of these this was made probably i don't even know when they first started coming out and it, it wouldn't even pop out of this and it didn't have holes to push it out so i'm being super careful but as you can see i got it on clearance for 297 at joann's so there's that so i'm gonna do that and then i cut a piece of paper that will go in between the two and actually this might be a little bit too big maybe i should cut it down a little bit because there was a white piece of paper I measured this, it was uh, four inches, and this one was three inches, so I did three and a half, but you know what, that's too big. So let me trim this down just real quickly. Sorry, guys. What is that? Oh, my phone's going off. Um, oh my gosh, I don't know why my phone is going off. I don't really care. Let's see here. This might be too small now. Let me see if this isn't too small now. My husband's waiting on a computer he ordered that for some reason is coming from China. Oh, that was almost perfect. And we didn't know it was coming from China. I was like, what What did you order? Because it wasn't cheap. But um, apparently that's where the company sends their stuff from. And then it's being held up in Anchorage, Alaska by FedEx because they didn't fill out um, a substance form, I guess, because of the battery or whatever. So I had to call FedEx for them and they called me back, but they're still looking into what's up with that. And I'm also going to um, just color a little bit the You're Awesome, which I actually forgot. I need to layer that up, but we'll do that. Take your time to do that a little nicer. I just kind of threw it together there. And so let's pretend this is going to be on a 5x7 card. So I have the 5x7 base because I'm going to cover the whole card, but if you want it a little bit smaller, you can obviously cut your paper a little bit smaller. Um, so these are all the elements is how I want to work this. So we'll see. Um... I guess we're just gonna keep this flat. And I'm gonna tape it down just so this is faster. Wet glue, whatever, if you wanna pop dot it just to make it a little taller, that'd be very cute. I'm just going to tape it down. And I'm not even sure where, let's say, let me look at the picture again. Thanks for sticking in here, guys. Hopefully <laughs> you're still around. I know I kinda went back and forth a lot. I try to do this part faster so we can just get going, but it's right in the center. See how they have the little circles? I'm telling you, their orange is much more orange than what my printer did, but there it is. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Right in the center. And I'm just eyeballing this part. And then I'm going to put this blue piece, or a white piece with the blue. So it's kind of busy. Maybe I should have used a regular die without the little maple leaves. But I thought the maple leaves were cute, so. We made it our own, didn't we? All right. This little guy. Hopefully I'm layering things up straight. I don't know why it looks crooked. It feels crooked to me. And then we're going to have our little dude here. And supposedly that you're awesome. It's supposed to be right next to him and all tiny, but look how big it is. Like, I couldn't make it any smaller, so... I think what I'm going to do is, I don't know how I want this to work. Yeah, maybe I'll just put your awesome back there and then we're supposed to layer that. So let me get, make it even bigger, right? Because we're going to layer it, but that's okay. We just switched it up, did our own thing. Put it right there. And then I'm just gonna fussy cut around this too. Not too big, because it was already big enough as it is. Just 
So guys, if you ever get these, try it out. I think it's really cute. Obviously, I mean, ink and stuff like that is not like the cheapest thing, but if you really are looking for some specific thing that you wanna do, oh, you know what? They always like to put like little movement on cards too, huh? Hmm, let's do that. Let's glue this down. I'm gonna do this flat. Oopsie. And then I'm gonna put a hunk of this Call All 3D glue gel. I've been trying to buy more of this on their website, on Crafters Companion. And it is always like sold out. So I'm gonna put a hunk here that keeps it up off the paper. Does that make sense? And then another little strip here of glue. So that little hunk there is gonna help us keep the paper more 3D-ish. Where are we putting this? Like here? Very good. And you probably didn't, I probably didn't have to waste this for this, but it'll just keep it there and give it some oomph. You can also use foam adhesives. And last thing. So thanks guys, thanks for watching. Um, sorry this took a little longer than I thought, but we got two very cute projects done in not too long. Part of what took me the time was looking for things. So I'm gonna pop dot, put these on here. I don't wanna waste your time watching that. And then I'm gonna place him like right here and very cute little card front that we just made. And of course, our little caddy, and I'll have pictures for you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you had a fun kind of checking that out, seeing a little more about printing out your own items. And I think this is really cute. It is kind of weird though, because whatever you're gonna sit here and color this, I mean, it's a cute idea, <laughs> but um, kind of interesting. Okay, you know me, I'm cleaning up, right. putting things away, and I was like, this is really cute, you guys. And then I was like, oh, remember these little flowers I made the other day for different things? How cute would those be? here and there or wherever. Oh, a little flower in her little head. Anyway, <laughs> I was like, well, this one's too big, but um, super cute, super adorable. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye now.